Greetings, my name is Rick and welcome to all the audio coverage from a blog to watch for everything that's going on in and around Watches and Wonders, Time to Watches and all the other brands that are just pitching up on hotels in Geneva to speak to us about their watches. We have interviews galore for you, so hopefully you're going to enjoy the one that's just about to pop up and if you do, then subscribe to everything else on the Spending Time channel and search for a blog to watch weekly on your podcaster for all the news and reviews of the watches that you're about to hear about in these interviews. Enjoy. Well, we welcome to the show one of the brands that's not at PAL Expo, but we had a good look around everybody else that was showing in Geneva, in the various hotels and at Time to Watches. And we thought we'd bring you a flavour of some of the other stuff, some of the proper novelties that are actually going on in the watch world. And so we welcome to the show Roger Peters from Hook and Huygens. Roger. Ooh, Hook, which is the almost bit, the Peters or the Huygens? Huygens. It's, uh, Hook, of course, is good. It's the English one. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Huygens, it's a Dutch uh, man. All right, okay. Huygens, yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah. Huygens. So I would pronounce it Huygens from over here, the anglicized of it. But uh, yet yeah, you know better, so we'll go with that. So, Roger, I approached you on the basis of seeing the watch that you're producing going, yeah, that's actually a bit different. That's actually a bit different from everything else and as i expressed to you earlier yeah it's a proper novelty this is novel and uh, but when i reached out to you i didn't realize that this is actually your first venture into the world basically revealing this watch and all it contains so first of all before we direct people to go and have a look at it what is your background in the world of watches uh, well, not so much. I started about uh, 10 years ago, so before I didn't even own a watch. <laughs> <laughs> and we were a Swiss engineering company, and actually we were uh, asked for the Swiss brand the HYT with hydraulic watches to make a machine for them. All right. And then I thought, hmm, that's very interesting, all these watches. And I'm, uh, I have a background of um, machine design, but also uh -huh. aesthetical design. So I thought, wow, that's, that comes nice together in the watches. So about 10 years ago, I started very slowly. And then about, I would say, six, seven years ago, it became a full-time job mm -hmm. to develop uh, this watch and the brand. Cool. Now, who can Huygens, or who can, I'll let you do it again, but who can Huygens <laughs> uh, describe, I mean, instantly, I and I've sent you a link, instantly I was drawn to, this is the watch equivalent of a pole mint. This is a watch with a hole. So describe to me how on earth you got from not owning a watch at all 10 years ago to designing a watch with no middle. Yeah. So it's not inspired of polo. Actually, you just introduced me to the polo. <laughs> Could have been. I'll try and bring you some across to the show. You, yeah, can give them out, sure. you can give them out as stand giveaways. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just, you know, you have that with IDs. I have uh, lots of IDs in my, uh, my, in my life. And just, you, can, and you cannot say where the additional ID comes from. It's like, just like that. Uh, watch with a hole in it. But that's just the ID. I mean, that's not, not even the first one percent. People think that's, that's the thing, the ID. But yeah. an ID is nothing. Anyone has, uh, can have ideas. And the thing is to realize it. <laughs> yeah. The first to think, is it really a good idea or not? Because <laughs> many people in the watch world, they were like, oh my God, it's so new. They didn't even know, is this a very good idea or maybe a very bad idea? And then I did a lot of investigations and I think it's a good idea. <laughs> and then um, apparently some people had that idea before, but they didn't dare to make it. And after all these years of developing it, I understand why they didn't make it because <laughs> it's just very, very difficult. So maybe some tried and gave up, um, but um, we didn't give up. So here it is. Yeah. Life and ticking. So to explain for those of you that haven't had a chance to go and have a look at the pictures yet, this is basically a movement that is built around the outside of the watch to produce a large diameter hole in the middle of the watch and the large diameter hole in the middle of the watch can then be filled with a jewel or 
a, a precious stone or a semi-precious stone or frankly anything you want and you can hot swap them so by taking the watch off you can remove the jewel because it comes out the back there's no danger of it coming out the front and uh, you can make the watch look entirely different so which came first this is like the chicken or the egg was it the which get you know was it the movement of the whole which came first the idea of being able to have something that you could swap or the idea that the way to do that was to put the hole in the middle of the movement in order to produce something. I'm curious as... Yep. A simultaneous double flash. Those are two together. Okay. Two together, Good. yeah. So explain to me the process. You're obviously an engineer. Explain to me the process of who you pick up the phone to first to say, right, I'm an engineer, but not a watchmaker. So which watchmaker did you drag into your orbit first to get encouragement to actually make um, this happen? Well, that's not how it works because mm -hmm. I've become the watchmaker. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. So no, basically I um, I just called the guy, do you know somebody in the watch industry? And I live mm -hmm. here in La Chapelle, so everyone knows people in the watch industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just start wherever. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I found a guy who said, uh, would you, uh, if I pay you by the hour, would you be able to explain me how watches work? Mm -hmm. Of course, I bought some books and I, I asked him a lot of questions and that's how we started. And then he gave me an old watch and I disassembled the old watch and I tried to assemble it again and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started. So I, on one side, I first had this general orientation, and then I spent a lot of time um, seeing if it would be a good business in the sense of uh, looking at all the competitors and analyzing the markets and all the competitors and is this a good business? Um, well, there is an enormous amount of competitors. You can be you can be set up by that. Think like, oh my God, I don't have a chance. But the, on the other hand, if there are so many brands. It also means, yeah, uh, you, you can have a chance. You can have a chance, yeah. And uh, so I investigated the business side of it and the marketing side. And I uh, investigated the uh, technical stuff, which is, that's my background. I just bought mm -hmm. all the books and yep. I started flowing through all the books. And I thought at a certain moment after like half year or something, I thought, I think I could do it. So I started, mm -hmm. yeah. So the movement itself effectively has eight barrels yeah. in order to, so I'm not sure the best way, you're simply going to have to go and look at the video on the hookenhuygens.com website, but effectively when you wind the watch, you're winding eight barrels, which provides enough power to then move what in a traditional watch, they're not quite mystery hands, but it's that kind of idea that the if if the middle was filled with you know, Chris uh, sapphire crystal, you would probably say that this watch had mystery hands. It is even more of a mystery because it just has a great big hole in the middle. Yeah. But the hands very clearly go, you know, still clearly tell the time. It's very obvious and very easy to read. It just has this magnificent trick of being able to pop the middle out of it in order to change up what it actually looks like from a precious stone to a piece of metal work to, frankly, anything you want that can fit in. And you effectively sell both the watch and then various things that you can that you can include in it. What do you think is going to be most in demand as you come to launch uh, this brand? Um... Basically, I don't care. Like, if your hobby is uh, making radio, yeah, and you like, for example, you know, these beautiful old uh, microphones, you know, from uh, from the first uh, the microphones around Second World War or before even. Uh, in your case, I would just say, okay, would you like a microphone? And I would make a little sculpture. Where I, for example, here I have a little sculpture. I don't know if you can see it. Yes. It's a moai from the. Um, the Easter Islands, you know, uh -huh. have these big yeah, yeah. stone statues. So uh -huh. yeah, I see that. That's sure. one I made. Here you have the logo of uh, ancient age. Mm -hmm. um, here you have uh, a, a diamond that you can uh, can put mm -hmm. in it. <laughs> a really big expensive diamond. Uh, <laughs> uh, here, 
like a blue crystal ball. It's basically uh -huh. anything. So if your hobby would, for example, be microphones uh -huh. Uh -huh, or whatever, an old-fashioned radio, I would make miniature old-fashioned radio for you. So what's going to be more most in demand? I I'll make it. Really don't know. Yeah. Cool. No, it is it is magnificent. Now I believe you've made a few of these already, but not many. Yeah. But as as we've said earlier, this is really going to be when you're stepping into the market. What sort of inquiries have you already had since you broke cover with this particular watch design? Uh, well, people need to get accustomed to the idea. Actually, mm -hmm. it's yeah. uh, so. It, most people, it takes a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. uh, even uh, actually, people inside the watch industry, it takes them more time to think like, "Wait a minute, everything is different <laughs> now." Uh -huh. uh, also, if I go for example to a diamond guy, I had to mm -hmm. interview with a diamond guy, and I says, "I, I just sell them. I just told him I can sell the watch to a customer, and the customer could come to you for a diamond." Oh, but we mm -hmm. don't do it like that. Generally, we, we put the diamond inside the watch. Uh, when I tell the guy, no, you can sell the diamond directly to the client if you want. And they, he says, oh, I need a couple of days to think about it because it's, everything's completely different, you know. Also, the idea that you buy one watch and basically every month, every year or every rough, you can put something new in. You don't need to buy a new watch. People inside the watch industry really need to, to have a lot of time to think about it. People outside the watch industry... They're just, they're a lot quicker, actually. They're like, oh, I can put anything in it. Can I also put this in it? Can I also put that, that in it? Yeah. So um, that people just ask if whatever I can put in it. Yeah. Yeah. So go to the website and have a look at the full range. It is quite magnificent. I, is this, is this what's, it, it strikes me that this might not be idea number one and done that there are probably another dozen ideas following on from this. Yeah, so... this is just... <laughs> Actually, how, how, how patient are you going to be to let this idea percolate out to the market before you launch idea number two from H&H? &H? So I do have to understand is that any idea I put in the inside is re relatively easy to make. I could mm -hmm. issue a new gem every week Mm -hmm. But all the complications to this, the first one is already pretty complicated. Huh? Mm -hmm. The fact that it's an uh, it's annular and the fact that uh, there's eight barrels in it. And it's not just yeah. eight barrels, they're also in parallel. And that's, mm -hmm. not, um, that's not very common. So anything I would add to the movement, that always takes me one or two years. Every, every yeah. new complication. So I already have a very a long roadmap of all the following modules. Uh, actually, uh, watch number two or three and four is already done. Um, but that's going to be a phase of a new complication every one or two years in that watch. And um, I think, yeah, new gems, it's going to be uh, dozens per year. Yeah. Cool. No, very excited to see this in the flesh uh, when I come out to Geneva in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you, Roger, for joining us. Everyone, please do go and have a look at hookandhuygens.com and see if you appreciate this idea quite as much as much as I do. I think it really is special. And as we said earlier on, it is a proper novelty. This really does meet the standard of this is a new idea. I, I really like this. So congratulations, and I look forward to seeing you in Geneva. Thank you very much for listening and uh, see you on www.bookandhuygens.com. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that'll make all the difference of folk finding the website, Roger. <laughs> Excellent. Goodbye. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening to this interview. Please subscribe to the Spending Time channel and subscribe to a blog to watch weekly for all our weekly news and reviews content from the gang at a blog to watch. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.